In Key Stage 2 Science, practical approaches that promote discussion and debate are not always the easiest lessons to manage and assess. We've asked some top educators and teachers for their tips, ideas and strategies for creating a classroom climate that enables the assessment of talk in science. Wow. You learn a lot more about what they understand, what they're interested in through allowing them a different way of communicating their learning. And I think that's a huge advantage of carrying out lessons like this. And two primary teachers will be demonstrating their practical science lesson ideas that encourage talk and discussion and enable them to embed science vocabulary. And then what we'll do is we'll brainstorm all these different areas. If I walk into a classroom where there's good science, I want to see animated yeah. children, excited, showing each other things, talking to each other, desperate to tell an adult. Between life in the ocean and life on land, I think. Like amphibian? What, um, yeah, kind of, yeah. Where you can assess whether children understand the implication of a science process, whether they can present and use scientific specific language. Yeah, particles that you can't aware. see them microscopic. A living thing. But well, it wouldn't stand out properly. You can see them without anything. And I think as a teacher, even though you're standing at the front of the classroom and you think you've got the best view in the house, it's incredible how often you you will miss certain things happening around the room. This species I don't want to attack, so I got away quite lucky. Sorry Bill, but that's all we have time for this evening. We'll probably never forget what happened because we did that drama and that role play. At Wilton Primary in Middlesbrough, advisory teacher Nikki Waller is preparing the classroom for a talk-based science lesson. I spend quite a lot of time before the lesson setting everything up and having everything ready because it's just very important that I'm not wasting time so that if I was to ask some children to go and collect something and it wasn't quite there or it wasn't quite ready then that's when the children might become a little bit unsettled and that's when we would lose the pace of the lesson. A big part of it is actually moving the chairs and tables. You'd think, what's that got to do with a science lesson? But because a lot of what we do involves the children talking to each other and sharing their ideas, I think it's really important that the children are grouped into four and that they're sitting two facing two because that's a much easier way for them to discuss and to share their ideas with each other. So you're the children, is that right? Yeah. Do you like a good challenge? Yeah. Children challenging yeah. industry. Industry? Have you got any ideas what that means, industry? Gosh, well at the moment out of the whole... Nikki's lesson is part of the Children Challenging Industry Project, which is a collaboration between York University, industries in the North East and local primary schools. I've never asked you that question this before. series of lessons are designed children. around problems you know posed by the industry? local companies. The aim is like to enable to the children to see how science yeah, is used really in a real-life like context. Okay. And usually there's three problems. The company will write or email the children saying, can you help us? So all the lessons follow on from each other and the children are working towards an end product. And I'm going to be asking you to tell me all the time what have you learnt and what have you found out. So really be thinking about it all the way through your challenges because that's what I'm going to be asking you. OK. What we need to do is to ensure that at every stage of science the children are talking. So when they go back from, for example, an introductory session to their tables where they're going to carry out practical work, they're allowed to talk. In fact, talk is what you want. There are many reasons why it's important for children to discuss in science. One of them is the fact that it is, it is modelling how scientists work in the real world. Children don't always appreciate that. They can see science as quite an isolated activity, a scientist alone at a, at a bench in a, in a laboratory. And it's not like that. Scientists work as part of teams. So we want them to appreciate that. Um, it also helps them to think more critically. It, it, it gives depth to their thoughts because you're providing that emphasis, you're providing that focus, you're providing structures for them to help aid their discussions. We recommended mixed groups 
for activities because the research that we'd seen before had shown that um, boy-only groups and girl-only groups don't talk as productively as mixed gender groups. Really mix the children up so that they're working with children that they haven't necessarily worked with. Because these lessons, it's all about good teamwork as well, you know. So you are now a little mini industry and you've all you're all going to be scientists this afternoon. Other tips in terms of encouraging group work are, are getting children into role so that you would only have one ch child from a group getting up, for example, to gather equipment, one child who is responsible for jotting down ideas or recording data. I mean, we use industry roles in the projects we carry out, so we might have somebody who's a personnel manager. Ready, go. Is there anything happening with the balloons? Right, it's halfway for a minute. I mean, quite often when you've asked the children to discuss their ideas and then, you know, you've got your communications officer and they're reporting back, um, first of all, you might notice some incorrect scientific vocabulary. OK, have we got any more information about microorganisms? Like them, the like... That big, if you look at them, the particles and stuff. Right, now you used a brilliant word like particles and then you finished off with the word stuff. So can you say that sentence one more time and tell me, using those really great science words, but not stuff. Particles and, and objects. I think it's a case of planning carefully what the discussions are going to be about. So even in terms of the teachers planning their own questions, sharing learning objectives at the beginning of a science activity that cover the science concepts and objectives around talk. What I want you to find out for me is how can we make this yeast start growing really, really fast, as fast as possible? OK, have you got some ideas already? Do you want to have a chat in your table group? I think that um, microorganisms expand in water. Put it on 120, not too high and not too low, so it's medium, and like it'll expand. The hot water feeds it because microorganisms are a living thing, and then if you leave it in a hot place, then it'll like expand and grow. Do you know your big breads? That's how it expands. It expands bigger. And what we encourage them to do is just to have post-it notes on their tables. So if a child gives a particularly inspired answer or uses a really great piece of vocabulary, we'll encourage the child to jot that down on a post-it note themselves. And then at the end of the session, we'll collect in all the post-it notes, make sure the children have written their names on, and then quite often we can put those into a floor book or keep those in our files for our own personal assessment. If you've got children talking in science and you're looking for assessment, for example for APP, then grab a notebook, grab a post-it, take a photograph, and then when you get the photograph back, just annotate. Get children to talk into um, a microphone. And there are many of those, like the Easy Speak mics or the little button mics or the talk cards. Anything that will just capture that one sentence or that couple of sentences. And they can also be useful because at some point children may listen to themselves and then write their own sentences. But what we want to do is try to capture that moment and we don't have to have everything written down in science but perhaps what we want to do is have a range of approaches in science in terms of communication. OK, we're going to start the lesson so I'd like your full attention. So you need to be able to see me. And make eye in Stockton at Whitehurst Primary, award-winning teacher Linda James assesses her pupils' use of science vocabulary in a lesson that incorporates role play and real-life news stories. Choose one report and you're going to prepare a mock interview on it. And then we're going to do some drama and we're going to role play an interview. So you're going to have an interviewer and an interviewee. Drama is used quite often in a variety of other subjects and I wanted to further its use in science. Also, what was in the back of my mind, well, in the forefront of my mind, really, was when I looked at the APP guidelines, uh, when you look at the strands for the APP, it becomes quite apparent that the, the second assessment focus 
does not lend itself so easily to our old format of lessons. It just sits around waiting for so we're looking at the application and the implications of science in real life where you can assess whether children understand the implication of a science process, whether they can present and use scientific, specific language. It's under a, a Conservation Act, look. What does that mean, do you know? Um, does it mean that they're being like pro protected? Protected, yeah. absolutely. Perhaps you'd have to research that. It's called an axolotl, that. We've tried We've researching it, and you? none came up. Nothing oh, at it, all. Must, it must come up. It's not a made-up yeah, no. word. It's real. It gives depth to their thoughts because you're providing that emphasis, you're providing that focus. So rather than take something about MMR, whatever it is in the paper at the time, at face value, we want them to be able to talk to uh, uh, other people and think more critically about what's said in the media. How many volcanoes are there in Iceland? There are about 130 volcanic mountains, but only about 22 active ones in Iceland. This, this is not an unusual event. Once we have that talk in science, that's where we will start to understand what children know, what sense they're making of things, and that's where we will get natural assessment points. And it's quite immediate. And so if you're listening to a child, then and there you can say, OK, what did you mean by that? And that's really good. Give me an example of that. And, um, we use all kinds of resources. They may use a speech bubble and write just a comment. They may use a concept cartoon and write down what the group thought. One person might scribe it. We might photocopy it for everybody else. It wouldn't be a long, convoluted writing process. That's the real video, because we're going we're gonna to video ourselves and then we'll feed back to the whole group of us. We'll feed back to everybody. We use video, of course, and they will watch that back with their class. So there are all kinds of ways. And I, I don't beat myself up about getting it recorded in writing all the time. Hello and welcome to Science in the News. I'm your host Libby Beechel and I'm here with marine biologist Bill Gates. Quite a lot of people in our class um, think what we do in a science lesson, why are we doing elements of drama in it? Well, drama helps us get things in our head because our um, newspaper report that we were doing over there will probably never forget what happened because we did that drama and that role play. Why did you choose that girl? Does it particularly interest you? Yeah. yeah. There are no right or wrong answers in activities like this. So it gives children a safe environment where they can share their own ideas and maybe challenge each other's ideas. Um, and it's also quite a nice assessment tool because you've got that recorded for the, ch for the teacher to see, well, these are their ideas about this already. And you can pick up things from their discussions that way. Well done. Give me a clap. Thank you. Well done, Sam. I know you find that difficult. Well done, that. I mean, Linda's idea of using newspapers is absolutely fabulous. And what you get there are children who are independent thinkers, who are independent doers, who like to talk science, and outside the school will go and find out about science and bring it back in, and therefore enriching science within the classroom. As they went out the door at the end of the day, they were still talking science. Now that's the power of letting children talk and letting children have a go for themselves.